What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video where last time we worked on this highway to transport our trucks along which bring in our plastic and rubber. But that's not the only sole purpose this, well, highway is made for. We have the option to send down liquids, also made some room for some belts, and then on the upper tier we've got some room for some trains and then the hyper cannon, well, hyper tube, so we can transport things in the future. And that was all built within the blueprint machine. Which means all I need to do is go into the blueprint menu and then, for example, let's put the highway support down. I can place that down just like that. And then just go into here again and then do the highway overroad or do the road three times. So and then I can just do that. Hold control and then just snap that one right there and then kind of build on and so on. But because I didn't put it on the foundations, <laughs> it didn't snap, which is a problem for me. Oh. God damn it. Why did I do this clip? Because now I've got to delete it. <laughs> Wait, no, I can actually load. Let me load instead. And there we go, deleted. Unless editing bits puts it into the actual video that he had to re reload. <laughs> but anyway, in today's video, I want to work on the power production because we're only producing 5,700 megawatts. And that's basically from this coal setup and this coal setup. And the first thing I want to do today is utilize the fuel that we've got going here, which is actually being stored in just some random canisters, well, random storage containers underneath. So if I remember correctly, if I do, I can't remember how much fuel I'm making here. We're making 188 on each line times it by two. We're making 377.334 fuel, which means if we do the math, 377.334, Three, three, seven, wait, what was it? Oh, crap. 188.667 times by two, 377.334. Okay, 377.334 divide by 12 is 31.4445 five fuel generators. And I think for now, we're just going to stick them on the roof. But we need more power than that. And that's where the golden coast is going to come into play. And that can be found right here on the western side of the map. And it's got two pure nodes and two normal nodes. And obviously, we'll combine the two normal to make a 600 line. So in total, we'll be sitting on 1,800 crude oil. And then we're going to send it into this general location around here to make this. which means we will then make just over 69,000 megawatts. So remember, if you're enjoying the video, remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just an emoji. And I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, myself, because I've released a uh, an album, uh, copyright free, DMCA free, it's on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, all that kind of stuff. Go and check it out, link is in the description and uh, go and enjoy some good times and good vibes. And if you use it in any content or anything, please let me know and show, let me know what you think of it. And I'm super stoked for it and I'm super excited and I ho really do hope you enjoy it. So um, yeah. So the first thing we want to crack on today is actually unlock the expanded power infrastructure. We want to unlock the fuel generators. We'll get more for belts, more for lifts, and we get to scan for Katerin, which we already can anyway. So let's just get that underway and send that off. Bada bing, bada bosh, and boom. So now we can go into our power tab and grab a fuel generator. And these actually consume 12 uh, fuel per minute and will give us an output of 150 megawatts. So as you can see on the right hand side, I've got 30 fuel generators, but because I've just put one down, it's removed one. So we technically we need 31. And you must be wondering why, because these two lines here is making 373.334 fuel very odd number it's only temporary we'll leave it as that which means if we do 373 divided by 12 it's going to give us 31.083333 so we're just going to bring that down to 31 generators but also just ignore the fixmas presence that is for another episode <laughs> so 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the pipe up here. I'm going to bring it into this pillar, bring it along here. And then each of these lines right there is where I'm actually going to put the pipes. And then these areas right here is where I'm going to be putting the fuel generators. Because fuel generators take up 2.5 foundations wide and backwards. So I've got enough room here just to place, well, 31 generators. So I went and did that. And then we just need to connect these up with pipes. So I did that. And as you can see, we are all powered up and gaining power. But we only increased it by 4,650, with giving us a max production rate of 10,200 megawatts. So as you can see, we're only consuming around 7,000 megawatts, giving us a headroom of about 3,000 to play with. But we need more, and I don't mean a crazy bunch because i want to push the tier seven and eight and normally around this well these tiers where i am working right now i normally build a massive rig and consume all the oil right now and but that would take a lot of time and this video won't have got out to you well until maybe a few more weeks from now but like i said earlier i'm going to utilize this area to make a smaller power plant which should be aiming in total around sixty nine thousand megawatts but normally I'm making you know, four times more than that if I wasn't doing this live on stream whilst doing the YouTube stuff. But eventually I will make a mega power plant, but I'm going to wait until we get blenders for that. So as you can see, I put down a small little foundation with a bit of a hyper cannon so I can shoot myself over to the main base over in the desert just so I can grab some supplies and then shoot myself back over to the coast. So the next thing I need to work out is if we're bringing over the uh, oil from this area, which is going to be 1,800 in total, two pure lines, and then two normal lines, which are going to be merged together, giving us three 600 crude oil per minute. We then put down a refinery, have a look at the heavy oil residue alternate recipe, which is this one, which is the exact same recipe we're using in the other power building, which takes 30 crude oil on the input and outputs 40 heavy oil residue and 20 polymer resin. The polymer resin is going to get made into plastic or rubber. That's then going to get sent to the uh, diluted package fuel refineries, being mixed with bottled water. And then the crude oil here is just going to go directly into these. So as we know, 30 times 20 is 600. So we're going to need, well, 60 refineries in three separate lines here. We're going to put 10 on this side, 10 on that side and then duplicate that two more times in this general direction. And there we have it, the 60 refineries are now down. And as you can see on the output sections here, this is exactly the same over there. So I'm only going to show you this side. These two are exactly the same. So that one and that one is classed as one. That one and that one is classed as one as well. So this is three sections right here. So on the output side here, we can see the merges all coming in, which is for the resin. And then the outputs for the heavy oil residue is going underneath. So if we head underground here, we can see 10 refineries here are being fed by 10 crude lines. And then if we go on this side, we can see the other 10 being fed on this side. Ignore all of that over there. I want to show you the smaller picture, which is just duplicated exactly from here to all of them. So I'm just going to show you this one. So 10 crude oil lines going into there. 10 crude oil lines going into that. So oh, Jesus. Bloody hell. We almost do that. We almost do it because I do it all the time. <laughs> So as I was saying, 10 crude oil lines on that side, 10 on this side, and then these ones here in the middle are uh, your outputs of refineries. And these are a little bit different because the outputs of the refineries, because they're outputting 40 heavy oil residue uh, per each machine, that's equaling to um, 40, uh, 40, 400, sorry, uh, on each line. And we can't merge the 400 together. So what I've done instead is this right here is all merged together to create one 400 line. But on the end here, you're going to notice I've merged one, two, three, four, five lines together, which is 200. So this 200 from this line is going to walk, go around here, merge with this 400 to make a 600 uh, heavy oil residue line, which means this line here is another 200, which will come around here. And then this will go to the central uh, section, uh, which will merge with this 400 to make 600 again. And then that's exactly the same what's been done over here, giving us a total of one, two, three, four output lines of 600 heavy residue oil. And then they need to get sent to some refineries. And then we need to send the um, resin to make plastic on this side, I think. 
and then over this side i'm gonna make rubber and then i'm thinking about maybe putting like a train station in the middle i don't know if i'm gonna do this in this episode but maybe in another one but put a train station in here to actually go through these buildings that will actually collect the plastic and collect the rubber from here to actually send that to another factory where needed. Okay, so I've been trying to work out the maths here. So we're making 400 resin from all these 20 refineries. That's gonna come down here and it's gonna go into these, which is making plastic. I've not connected the water extractors up or anything yet, or I've not even connected the crude oil up. I'm just kind of testing this to see how this is gonna look and work out. And what I have to do, because the input for the plastic is actually 60 polymer, that's 60, 120, uh, 240 for four, double that which will go over this side which will be 480 so here i've done a end so all these splitters here are actually sending to these eight refineries here to consume a full 480 line right because we've unlocked more four lines and then in this section we have the same so 120 240 and then here 240 and then 360 right but we've only got 320 maximum capacity on this line so what i've had to do i've had to underclock this one to actually only provide 20 resin per minute to give 6.60 that's a horrible number and i don't like that but it's helping with the resin and we can easily sort that out by the sink right so i feel like that's how we're gonna be doing the plastic I'm probably going to have to stress test this. So what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and grab the oil, bring that in and turn all these on and just see how this performs. And I'm going to get this plastic to come around the back side of this uh, over here. So the outputs are on this side. This is going to come around here. It's going to merge up with this line here. And then in this section here, I'm going to put some constructors down with some storage containers here because I need to make a lot of canisters. And the reason I need to make a lot of canisters is because when I go to do the bottled water and the packaged fuel and all that kind of stuff, I need to fill all of them lines. And then I'll show you in a little bit how we can recycle all of the plastic containers or the canisters, sorry, uh, to actually re like reuse them so we don't have to make any more and consume any plastic. Uh, I'm actually going to send that uh, elsewhere. So... I need to put that down and this is only going to be a temporary setup until we've got like mass uh, storage of canisters here so let's go and start working on this crude oil and let's start bringing it in and then let's start powering it up as well oh by the way i know i don't know if you've noticed but i've just started putting the rubber down the rubber's the super simple very simple setup over there uh it's a lot easier than what the plastic is because it's only 40 per minute and over here we're bringing down 480 you can do the math we've e easily easily balanced that one out but the resin from this middle section is actually being merged into this line here to make this an additional 480 because, you know, 400 coming down here, 80 is coming onto this line from that middle section. And then the rest of it is actually going onto this end section here to actually fill them to what is needed. So like I was just about to do, let's go and do the crude oil. Okay, so I've been working on the pipes and you can see I've got one normal node here one normal node they merged together both of them were overclocked to send 300 out um to actually merge together here to make a 600 line and then down there is a pure crude and over there's a pure crude going on their own individual lines making three 600 lines to make 1800 crude oil um, but a lot of people have been asking how i kind of do these up here and it's it's pretty pretty simple and all you do is as you can see this like bend here when you've got your foundation down and you actually bring in your pipe or your conveyor belt, for example. Let's just, let's just put down a, a conveyor pole here, just like this. And then let's bring over a belt, just like that. We're going to grab ourselves our pillars in the architect tab. I could just copy and paste the other one, but too late now. So once you've got one down there, you just aim at this, hold control, and you can micromanage this, right? So you can just kind of place this here and then just take that along there. So then you've kind of got like encased belts so you can send items through there and then you just put your like your legs on it and all that kind of stuff in well if this foundation wasn't here i could put this underneath here but yeah that's how i basically do this stuff uh, and it's super simple and super effective okay so now with the crude oil coming in and we can see the resin has already been back backed up because it's been i've had the crude oil going for a little bit now 
The only problem is we're not bringing in the water um, to actually get these functional and kind of get this moving. Um, because right now, them refineries over there are backing up with heavy residue oil because it has nowhere to go. Um, the resin has because it's going into these machines, right? So I've been kind of planning this section here and I'm trying to work out the best way to actually put down our water extractors and coming to think of it now, this is probably going to be a bad idea, the direction I'm kind of doing this. And we don't need this many pipes. Why did I put this many pipes down? We only need technically nine, eight, nine. I put way too many down here. Okay, that's a little better for now, and it's going to do what we need. I do need to add more water extractors on this side, and then merge this one with that one together, then merge that one and that one together to make the 600 lines. Um, uh, but for right now, it's just kind of going that one and that one's merged together, that one and that one's merged together, uh, just so we can get the water flowing into here. Um, okay, ignore that. That needs to be removed. Eh. No. We do not clip bits. You know this. Uh, so we've got the water going in. We just need the resin now. So after, while I've been doing that, they actually, there's been actually plastic being made. So if you run around here where the constructors are, um, here's what I was saying. Just like put a couple of constructors down, merge them all together and get all the canisters just to go into one uh, storage container. Um, and we need to kind of keep this going. Otherwise, when it comes down to filling the packages later on with all this water, we're not going to have enough canisters and it's we're going to have to wait for them to make, to then go into that. And it's just going to be very, very, very time consuming so the one thing we need to look at now is if we're bringing 600 heavy residue oil in we need to convert that to diluted package fuel so we're going to go into refineries and we're going to place one of them down and if we look in here scroll down and alternate diluted package fuel give that a click and we can see 30 heavy oil residue 60 package water is going to make 60 package fuel so what we need technically for this is on the input side of this we're going to need down a packager and that's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're just going to put that directly on the input of the refinery, just like this, because one, it's going to be packaged water. Water's going to come in from this side. Water's going to come from there. Canisters are going to go into there, which we've already got being... Oh my God, look at all these presents. Jeez. Well, I guess Merry Christmas. I do have a Christmas special video coming out on, on Christmas Day, so hopefully you can enjoy that and watch it. And I will be streaming on Christmas Day because... There's people in this world that do not have family and friends on Christmas Day and don't have anyone to enjoy it with. So I will be live on Twitch. We're going to do some community games. We're going to have a good laugh. So if you want to be involved in that, go into the link in the description and come and say hello. And we're going to go to celebrate Christmas together. So back at this here, with the input of the water going in, so 60 water package, uh, 60 package water is here, going into here, which is 60. That's going to need 30 heavy oil residue. We're doing 60, well, sorry, 60, uh, 600. So that means we're going to need 20 refineries in a line, 20 packages in a line. And then on the output side, this is going to be outputting 60 package fuel, which is sending out 60. And then if we put down another packager on the output side, that's going to go straight into here. And we're going to unpackage that into fuel. So 60 package water, again, one to one ratio. So for every one refinery, we're going to need two packages, one on, on either end. So 20 packages is going to equal 20 uh, unpackages on that side and 20 packages on that side doing water and this one unpackaging fuel. This then, the empty canisters are actually going to be needing uh, output in 60, which if you think about it, if we send that underground, bring it back around here, it then gets recycled back here because this is empty. So that's why we just need to fill up the canisters here, fill up these packages. These packages will then send the bottled water here. The bottled water will go and turn into packaged fuel. The packaged fuel will then go into this one to unpackage back to empty canisters. And then the 60 empty canisters will then come back around and loop into this one. So then we've got like a little eco-friendly because as you know, fix it does not waste. Okay, so many hours later on the, the live streams, you can see that we have got 20 refineries down here. And like I said, with a packager on the uh, input side, well, this is the output side, uh, and then this is the input side on this side. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So for one packager, it goes to one refinery, one refinery goes to one packager. And then on the output here, you can see that the empty canisters are going underneath the ground, gonna go underneath here, and then go along this line and recycle back into being bottled water. 
And then we have the fuel coming down here. And as we know, because we are having 20 and they are outputting 60 per minute each, that means that every uh, line of 20 refineries, 20 packages or unpackages like this, this is one section, is going to make two 600 lines equaling 1,200 fuel. That then transports along here and then goes onto the upper floor. I have one uh, pump here and one pump here. I know this is not needed, but this is how I like to do it to make sure that I get uh, optimal flow upstairs. Ignore these because this is where originally the fuel was being sent to so I can actually, you know, keep this running and optimize it and just make sure it's working. But also, as I stated, I did need to change the water extractors here. So I, as you know, I did have that one side. I did say that I was going to put a duplicate this side and then merge you know, merge these together and we kind of come up with this. There's just presents everywhere. <laughs> it's just blocking my vision. Um, but yeah, like this is how we've got the water going in now. And then these are going to be going into where they need to go. So this right here is going into the plastic and rubber. So that one's going to plastic. That one's going to rubber. And then these are going to go into every single one of these lines going along here. Because we need to do this many, many more times. But you probably noticed that these have got some yellow lights. And the reason being is on the upper layer i've started to work on my fuel generator if i can make it up here three two one there we go nice so as you can see i've now kind of started working on this we have now got more fuel and this right here is i believe 20 40 i think it's 40 did i do 40 i can't remember let me count yeah 20 on that side meaning 20 on that side equaling 40. But well, you must be wondering, bitch, you've got 600 fuel, which goes into, you know, needs 12 per each machine. So if you do the maths, 600 divided by 12 is 50 generators. So what are you doing with the extra 10? Well, as you know, it, whenever you set up lines like this, you're going to have a lot of, well, most of the time, your end machines are going to get starved of fuel. A good way to fix this is actually to overclock the first couple. So I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five uh, fuel generators here, and then five on this side. I'm, I'm going to overclock them to 200%. Because as we know, fuel plants, uh, well, fuel generators and coal generators are now linear. And what that means is if we put our uh, power shards in here, and we was to bring this up, it's actually going to, you know, produce 300 megawatts. Where before, they never used to do this. So I'm going to overclock this one, overclock this one, overclock this one, overclock that one, and overclock that one, and yep, overclock that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And what that's going to do, that's going to help with the actual um, starvation of the end machines. I don't ask me why, it just does. We science this on stream. Uh, I just wanted to take, I just took out the power shards here just to show you guys on why I'm doing it. But uh, if you was to put like um, 25 in a the line there and 25 in a the line there, I don't know if it's the distance of pipes I, I, and the, the, the amount of machines that's transferring. It's something on the lines of that, but it's a whole kerfuffle. So just please trust me and just go with um, the overclocking on five on that side, five on that side, and you'll find out that your end machines over there will actually be fine. But what you need to do is make sure that your fuel generators are turned off when you fill the pipes. Fill your pipes first and then turn on your machines and the best way to do that is actually do not put the power poles or attach any power lines to your fuel generators until your fuel is full because if you had a fuel generator with fuel inside of it and you was to connect a power line and that power line was here not connected to anything that fuel generator will still power so fill your pipes and then um do all your power lines you know you can, you can you don't have to do them all at the same time you can literally go power power moving on to this one connect that one power to that one do that one power to that one it just makes it so much easier and you're not going to have any backlog in your fuel and all that kind of stuff so i now need to overclock these and then we should be good and there we go they're now all overclocked and then if we go with 50 machines 50 times by 150 wait that, that's divided bits that's divided by 150, that's 7,500 megawatts. So right there, we've increased our power production by 7,500. And now if we look at our power line, uh, power, we're, we're now making 16,950. It's 100% not stable as of yet, because this right here was the inconsistency because we wasn't making, you know, we didn't have them power sharded. So 
over time, this should uh, this should start balancing out now. And then what I need to do, and it's the start of a big job, is get this, duplicate this by one, two, three, four, five times. That whole section. So I need to get that one, flip it, place another one here, then place another one here, here, and here, and then get all of them, and then duplicate that by five times. So it's a big job. So I best get to work. And there we go. I have now duplicated everything down here to make sure it's fit. It's all aligned. Everything's nice and tidy. We're making the fuel. And I've even added a couple of decorations, just, just pillars and just walkways. Just kind of walk around where we're going. Oh, and I've added power storage. So the power storage was pretty simple. I just basically put it on one foundation for everyone. And I've put down, I to be honest, I don't even know how many. I think I put down like 300, 400, something like that. But what I've made sure I've done is I've made sure I've got the power that this is being, that's producing here. So from upstairs with the fuel generators, all that goes into here. This then goes out and will be our line that goes to our factory. Yep, and you guess right, on the top layer, I've done exactly the same thing with what I did on the first line with all the other lines. Making a total amount of power, 69,000 megawatts. Now, I just want you guys to comment, nice. <laughs> and we have completed. <laughs> and for those that know me, like I said before, I normally do this on a very, very larger scale. But I cannot do that, especially if I want to push the YouTube series forward and especially with the time constraints I have to make sure that you guys get the videos a lot faster than what they are. Or I would have been. That's better. But there we go. We have now finished this episode. So make sure to check out my other content right here, guys. And remember, go and check out my album. It's awesome and it's cool. It's chill. You can do whatever you want with it. So as always, keep smiling and I'll see you in another video.